Hello, testing, testing. This works, but it's very noisy. So how do I turn it down? How do I... See if you can hear me, all right? Hello, Wesley. How's it going? It's question time at creativecubes.co. Pretty quick. Yeah, okay. Okay, sweet. I think maybe you could even turn off the desktop. Hey Ashley, how are you? Guys, we are on air. I'm just going to fade to black, so uh, there's nothing on it. Do you need the audio as well?
and that's James' team. Awesome, it's yeah, making it wonderful. Yeah. I'll just check with these guys. Okay, cool. <laughs> the dance. Maybe I should, I'll sing. Should I sing as well? Should I sing? <laughs> Hello, hello. My name is. I like how majority are here and then you. Sure, maybe. Already. Cool, cool, cool. Hello, everybody. My name is Rugare Goma. For those who don't know me, thank you so much for being here. Um, this is my first community event. I'm having four this year, and um, you know, it's been a whole year that I haven't been connecting with people because of COVID. So it's really exciting to actually be physically present with people. Um, for some of you who don't know me, I'm a high performance life and business coach. So what that means is that I use my life to empower and inspire people to forge their own path in their life. And so my team and I are always looking at how we can touch people's lives so that they can live their full wondrous expression. And this year, as some of you know, every year I have a theme. And this theme for this year is bold leadership and really elevating on the two aspects of leadership called vulnerability and authenticity. And so for, for me personally, after coming out of what I call my isolated state, I didn't want to be part of <laughs> connecting with people. I just really loved having my own time at home, my creative space, um, filming with James in the studio when we could. And so for me, I really started seeing that I started to stop sharing myself and my heart with people and which is not consistent to my, my vision. So that's why these community events got created so that we, I actually come out and connect with people and other people connect with me as well. Um, I'm so excited to be doing this event with my friend, James Shadrach. Um, James and I, we've known each other for the past three, four years now. And James literally had started his business at the cluster. And my mentor introduced me to James. And my mentor, um, Jeff, was like, you have to meet this guy. James, you're what, 25, 25 yeah, yeah, years old? Even younger. even younger then. <laughs> and James was always hungry to learn more. And it was just so inspiring to meet this human being who you know, was just wanting to make a huge difference, not just to himself, but to his family. You know, James you know, grew up in social um, housing and he didn't have many opportunities, yet he was fighting to create opportunities. And now today, he's got a business, a team of three other people, employed his brother, who was the first person in, his the, first person in the company to employ and alter his life and entire family. So for me, it's really a privilege to be in this space doing our first um, community event together and sharing some insights. So why did I choose James for our first community event? Well, first of all, we have a deep personal relationship in this regard, but also James has helped me um, in my company as well. So James is responsible for our video digital presence in my company. And last year, he's been helping me filming my book. And that was just so much fun. I had so many concerns 
I'm kind of like, um, in, the, in my company, my team know me as being very particular, <laughs> which is called for <laughs> difficult sometimes because I want to know everything and I want everything to be a particular way. I'm very specific at, on how I want things done. And I remember calling James when I'd already engaged him. I said, James, I don't, I'm really scared right now. I'm trusting you with my life and to capture my life. And my life is really vulnerable. You know, a little bit about myself, for some of you who don't know me, you know, I grew up in Zimbabwe. I came to Australia by myself when I was 16 years old. Um, I discovered I was gay. So I had all these concerns of, am I gonna be abandoned by my family? Growing up in Zimbabwe, I couldn't even think about my sexual identity because if, you, if I did, I would go to jail or be abandoned. So coming to Australia was an opportunity for freedom and lots of opportunity. And it was hard work, you know, as an international student, you know, the first six years as an 18 year old, I raised over $120,000 to go to university. And the person you're seeing here wasn't the person who arrived. I was quiet, I was shy, you know, I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. I thought white is better than black. So I had all these stories to share and I was entrusting James to share that. And he was like, dude, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he created the pathway for me to comfortably share. And we spent weeks in the studio in front of the camera and I just talking and him bringing out the things that for me, some of the things were quite traumatic or some of the things that I just thought were like just everyday things, which he was like, do you know how significant that is? And I'm going to be forever grateful for James helping me express myself so that I can then share my message because then I hope you know, other people who may be like me, people who are gay, who may not have a voice, you know, can be inspired to come out and step into, into themselves. So I'm really grateful for our partnership. And um, for those who don't have my contact details, feel free to contact me. We can talk afterwards in the, um, after today's session to connect. But in any case, um, we'll be also sending the video and information to contact James and myself. We're going to be finishing at 8 p.m. as well. If you need to go to the toilets, there's some toilets just over there. And feel free to continue eating and having a drink and just have, and just have fun. Thanks. Thanks, Ricardo. Yeah, thank you. Switch this over. Thank you. I think I'm all set. <laughs> Can you guys hear me okay without the mic? I might just not use this. With the mic too? Is that a bit better? Okay, cool. I'll just keep with the mic. Cool, so thank you so much for being here, guys. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to be here and listen to me <laughs> share some stories with you. The intention for me is really to give you as much as I can. I'm gonna share everything I'm doing in terms of video marketing. I'm gonna share my story too. And really the hope is that I'm empowering you guys to take things to the next level. So, uh, let's get started. This is a guide to video marketing. But before we get into that, I'm really gonna be sharing my story with you. So right now, I run a video production business out of Creative Cubes here in South Melbourne. I have a team of five people. These are all my guys at the back of the room. They're helping live stream the events. And we've got a lot going on. We've got a lot of opportunities and it's exciting. Uh, but it definitely didn't start out this way. So I grew up here in Melbourne and I actually grew up in public housing. Um, so. I was from a low socioeconomic background and my parents didn't work. And so just to get context for that, um, we probably didn't ever have more than $1,000 between us as a family at one single time. There was a lot of uncertainty, there was a lot of breakdowns within the family and it was just rough. And so for me growing up, there was just this constant sense of hopelessness and uncertainty. Um, and despite all this, I was the first person in my family to go to university and that was sort of the step to move forward and really make a difference in my family's life. I studied psychology and as I was studying psychology, I kind of realized I didn't want to continue with psychology and it would take a really long time. I did four years and I was like, man, I have a whole nother four years to go, maybe another two years just to learn some extra stuff and then I could practice. So I realized that what I really wanted to do was start a business. The way I could actually impact my family's life and change my life was to start a business. And so I stopped psychology and I went out and tried a bunch of things. And ultimately, I failed everything. 
I tried a lot of different ideas. I actually tried to be a coach. Probably don't really have the skills. I'm getting coached by a much better person these days. Um, but I was really at a loss. Here I was with a degree, trying a bunch of things, and nothing was really working. So I realized I needed help. And I literally typed entrepreneur into seek.com.au just to try and spend time with business people. I knew I needed help and I knew it, I needed to learn from people. And so this led me to working as a receptionist at a co-working space. Not this one, but a different co-working space. And I met people, I met mentors, I built a network, and I ultimately met a guy called Jeff Donovan, who's the same mentor who mentored Regare. He taught me, taught me this whole idea of purpose and why, and really helped me start my business. I eventually worked up enough to quit my full-time job and then go out on my own and start my videography business. I don't know if this is just like the universe or it's chance, but through all my networks, I got to meet uh, Toby, who's the founder of Creative Cubes. So essentially my first client was the guy who runs all these spaces. He took me under his wing, taught me everything, I, a lot of what I know about business and really helped me get to the next level. That first year that I went out on my own was probably one of the hardest. I was just a scrappy freelancer. Every month I was thinking, is this gonna work? Am I actually gonna be able to live? Am I gonna be able to earn enough to keep moving forward? I really didn't know. It was really one of the hardest years. <clears throat> that second year, I actually won some space here at Creative Cubes to run my business. I won, I won 12 months free rent, and that sort of gave me a little bit more stability. But it was such a tough year. I made so many mistakes. I called Regare multiple times in massive breakdowns, and he coached me through it. Um, and it was, it was a tough year, but ultimately we got some experiences where we got to work with the Australian government and that was huge. And they actually sent me overseas to Singapore and to Shanghai to film and create content for them. And this is me not even having a passport. I'd never been overseas before and I had to prepare all this stuff and get ready to make that trip. But ever since that, we had so much more, I guess, credibility with the work that we did and that has led to so many opportunities. Then that past year when COVID hit, despite everything happening, we were able to move into a new office at Creative Cubes. We were able to build out our team and really grow. So now we have um, Jai, who's my younger brother, who's the back there. We have Ty, who is next to him, who's a great, great creative who's just joined us recently. And then we have Astley, who's originally from Malaysia, and he's come over here to help us and create all our content. And so at this point, I have a team that I really love. And the most fulfilling part for me is that I just get to support these guys. We do work that we love and we get to grow together. So that's kind of where I'm at today. That's, that's my story and that's, uh, that's really who I am. So now I'm gonna share with you guys some stuff about video and I really wanna share everything so you can get some benefit from using video content. Um, now the first thing I wanted to share with you is actually a story about how I had my first success with video content. Can you guys hear me okay now? I'm talking to the mic properly. So after I finished university and I was looking for a job, um, you know, here I was, I'd graduate with, with an honors in psychology and I thought it was really great, but every application I put out, I got no responses. And so it was really disheartening. I kept trying, kept trying, nothing. I'm trying to find a job, nothing. And so I was kind of at a loss, but I was starting to explore with video content and I kind of realized what if I make a video resume of myself and send that out to potential employers? Guys, the instant I did this, I got way, way more interaction. Everybody started responding to me and ultimately led me getting my very first job and they almost tried to hire me as a manager. And this is me, fresh out of university, no work experience, no managerial skills, but they were like, yeah, you seem like a great person for the job. I'm like, wow, this is really powerful. Once they realized that I didn't have the skills, they <laughs> offered me a different position. <laughs> but it really sort of showed me that video is powerful in a way to get a message. Now, we've kind of got a small group here, so I feel comfortable showing you this. I'm just gonna see if I can get up the actual video that I sent. This is. This is kind of embarrassing for me to show you, but let me just see if I can pull this up. Okay, here we go. So this is 2016. Uh, this is a young James trying to get a job and making a video resume. I'll just play a little bit of this.
Okay, I think, I think that's enough. I feel super embarrassed looking at this. But anyway, I sent that video out and that instantly created more interaction, more engagement, and ultimately got me my very first job. So that was my first in to, hey, video is actually really powerful if you can use it in an authentic way and if you can tell a story. So now I'm just gonna talk a little bit about why do we actually use video? And I think there are lots of different reasons that you can use video. Um, people are using it in advertising, people are using it sort of to get, generate sales. For me, it really comes down to these three points as to why you would use video. So branding, branding is really getting your message out to the people that you want to work with and having every piece of content that you send out there have people positively view your brand. So every piece, people are like, wow, for Regare, for example, every piece that Regare le releases, you're like, wow, it's so high quality what he's doing. He's making such a difference in the way he works. I want to work with him. And it gives people this perception of quality, of uh, a sense of bigness, that it's you know, professional and he's working with a lot of people. That's sort of the branding part. The trust part is by consistently posting content, you start to build trust with people that you didn't even know. The way I think of this is that you go through three stages. One is people start to know you. And this is literally what I've been doing on LinkedIn as I've been posting more and more content. People who have no idea who I am start to get to know me. I'm just posting, sharing my story, creating connections. Hey guys, come on in. That's okay. And so then people get to know me, then they start to like me. And the reason that they like me is because I'm consistently providing value. I'm trying to think how can I create content that helps people, that makes a difference for them. And this is over a long, long time. And then they get to trust me. So they've seen me over a long time. I've consistently shared my story. And then when people actually want to reach out and want to work with me, we've built this whole relationship over months, over years of me sharing my story. Now, to bring this to reality, I have a lot of conversations with people. I'd say most business conversations I have with people, they already know me. They've seen my videos, they've seen a photo, they've read something about me. So I'm probably never going in cold into a business or a sales conversation. There's always some background there and it's just from content. And now I can definitely say I've had at least 10 very concrete experiences where I've produced this piece of content, which has led to this conversation, which has led to that person buying and working with me. And that's just facts. So it's one, creating the branding and the connection, but also of individual pieces of content that can lead to new business for you. So that's why I do video. <laughs> that's, um, that's my strategy there. Now, the common question that I get asked when I'm talking about video content or content marketing is, what's the strategy? Yeah, it's great if I'm producing all this content, but what's the strategy and what's the plan behind it? So I've made it very simple for you guys, um, for everybody to understand in terms of strategy. I really just have four points to how you should build a video marketing strategy. We're gonna produce consistent content, we're gonna continuously increase the quality, we're going to tell a story, and we're going to collaborate. That's it, that's the whole strategy. Oftentimes people can get very, very complicated. They can try to sell you on different strategies or make it seem like there's something special, but this is it. This is what works for me, and this is what is getting me results. So I'm just gonna go in a little bit more detail with this. So consistency. Consistency is probably the most important thing. If you just post one piece, it's probably not gonna make a difference. But what really does make a difference is every week just sharing a little bit. Maybe, and this is, this is for me, the first couple of things I post when I started, I maybe got maybe two, two, three likes, maybe a, a comment or so, but it was really sort of disheartening. But I just kept at it, and I knew consistency, consistency was important. At a base level, you should be at least posting something once per week. And the reason that we're doing this is because people get to know you. If you remember that know, like, and trust thing, as you continuously share your story, people get to know, like, and trust you. So for me, um, you know, the last couple of posts I've put out there, I had some posts where I'm getting a reach of 10,000 on LinkedIn. 10,000 people are viewing, 10,000 people are pressing on my posts, and I have no idea who these people are. Sometimes we look at people like that who are getting lots of engagement, and they think, wow, like, how do I get that? What are, what's the secret thing they're doing? It's just this. 
It's just consistency. They've been doing it for a long time and slowly but surely they grow connections and then they grow more engagement. So consistency is really important. I think for a base, everybody should be sharing at least once per week and you should really commit to that strategy. Next is quality. So the problem with content at the moment is there's so much noise out there. Everybody is producing content. That's why it's really important that you focus on quality. Now some people out there say that you should just post as much as you can every day. Get 100 pieces of content, people like Gary Vee, and it's great. I think it's a great message, but I personally don't agree with it. I think you should aim for quality. And particularly if you're working with professional people, you don't want to just be sending out crap and nonsense out there. You want to be making real connections with them and showing the value of what you do. So our approach here is how do you improve the quality? Every time you're posting something, you're thinking, how can I do that better? How can I, how can I get to the next level? In a very technical way, is it that I'm gonna add a light? I was doing my videos or my content with no light, now I'm gonna purchase a light. I had no microphone, now I'm gonna purchase a microphone. The content that I did last time, nobody really engaged with it. Am I gonna do a little bit more research and structure and change my content? Is it gonna be energy? I've realized every time I'm very low energy and boring on video, no one engages. So now I'm gonna make sure I've got a lot of energy and approach my videos differently. The idea here is every time you're posting, you're thinking about quality. How do I get better? How do I improve it? And that's what sets you apart from every other person who's producing content. The next one is to tell a story. And there's, there's two parts to this. First off, with content, you want to be constantly telling a story about your brand and about your business. I'll take Regari again because he's a great example here. But Regari creates transformational people, uh, transformational experiences for people's lives and their businesses. And it makes a huge impact. That's what I've experienced myself. So in his situation, we want to be continuously telling a story. Regari changes people's lives. And here are all the examples of the people whose lives he's changed. And we're constantly telling that story, whether it's through video, whether it's through photo, testimonial, information. So that broad audience that gets to know Regare starts to see, oh, Regare is the guy who changes people's lives. And they will relate to him like that. Similar thing to Creative Cubes, we produce all their video content. The game for us is, let's make everyone know that they're the best at co-working. So if you ever need space, the first person you think of is Creative Cubes. That's the constant story we're showing. Look how many people are coming here. Look how great the space is. Look at the different awards they've won. This is a beautiful space. Constant, constant storytelling. The other part of this is what is a story? Sometimes, or I think often in content, we're like, you should be a storyteller and you should tell your story, but what does that actually mean? And how do you tell a good story? My very simple instructions here to make it great is to just focus on tension and resolution. So what that means is when you're sharing your story, and this could be in video or just when you're talking to people, you want to create tension and resolution. What we often do is go straight to the resolution. I'm a business person and everything's great. And nobody relates to that because it just, it's just not real. What you want to do is take one step back and say, I had this challenge, I had this issue that I was trying to overcome, and then I overcame it, and now everything is good. And in that way you create the tension. So the tension is by explaining the challenges that you have or the hero in the story, and the tension point is the audience doesn't know, is this person going to be okay? Are they going to get to the other side? Are they going to achieve the thing that they're wanting to achieve? That's how you create the tension and resolution. And probably one of the other most important ones is collaborate. So if you want to get more engagement with your content, if you want to grow reach, you need to collaborate. So you need to actively look for who else is producing content regularly and how can I collaborate with them. A really simple example, so this is me and one of our clients here. This is uh, Ewan from ROI and he runs a marketing business. So he produces a lot of content, we produce the content for him, but me being in a video with him exposes me to his whole network. And now I'm getting introduced to all these new people. A similar thing that we do with Creative Cubes, who we work with, we're constantly looking for who's got the big following and how can we get them on the show? Because then we get introduced to all their network. So I really encourage you to think about who in your network is currently producing content and how can I collaborate with them? Can I interview them? Can I create some type of show? Can I get them on? 
how can I work with these people? And that's really how you can get a big uh, engagement and really grow. And this was a bonus one, uh, but this is really important, is authenticity. So you need to have authenticity when you're producing content. And really what that means is just sharing your whole self. You're not just telling this polished and beautiful story, you're telling, you're telling people how it actually is. So if you look at any of my posts, yeah, I'm celebrating the wins, but it's always, right, what comes before is me saying, this is what I struggled with, this is the issue I had, this was the challenge I came up against, I didn't know if I was gonna overcome it, and then we did in the end, and I'm just authentic about it. So I think an easy way to think about authenticity when you're producing content is rather than just celebrating the wins, think about what's the challenge that I've overcome? What's the real thing that I'm grappling with and share that? I just had a meeting today with somebody who met me through LinkedIn, through my content, and we might potentially do some work together. And this person said to me, the reason that I reached out to you is because you were authentic. You just shared and nobody else does that if you were really vulnerable and that's kind of new and fresh. I don't see other people doing that. That's it. All I'm doing is sharing my story. I'm just thinking, what am I actually dealing with and how can I share a little bit of that? Now you don't need to share everything. Some people are you know, authentic about every single thing and maybe you're oversharing. My general rule of thumb is how can I share in an authentic way that makes a difference for people? I find for myself, it's by sharing the challenges, the struggles, the things I'm battling with, that I overcome, those are the things that I want to share. So, uh, now we can talk about some of the different types of content that we can work with. So, yes, it's great to create uh, content and we've got a strategy behind it, but what can we actually do? How do we actually create content and what form does it take? So, I'm just going to explain some different points here that we've got and some different types of content that you can think about. So, the first one, which is the easiest one, I think, is educate. So create educational content about your business, about your niche. So if you're a coach, you're talking about different challenges people are going through, how to overcome them, and different frameworks for that. If you're in um, finance, you're providing people financial advice. Um, if you're in video like us, we're teaching people about video, we're teaching about marketing. And the best way to find content through the education piece is to think about what are the common questions that people are asking? What are the common pain points that I see? And how can I create content around that? So what that means is every, con uh, every question that you get from your community, that can be a piece of content. For me, a common question that I get is, what's the strategy, James? How do I make a strategy for content? Which is why in my speech I'm talking about strategy. I'm building content around the questions that I get asked from my community. The next one is story, and this is sharing your own personal story. As you go through your journey, whether it's your own individual one or it's with your business, you're sharing your story. Here's the next milestone that we reached, here's where we used to be, here's the new update, oh, there's a new team member joining in, I'm gonna celebrate them and share that story. The interview, so this is a great one if you can find people in your community that you want to interview, and it's a very simple setup where you're just sitting down interviewing them. Maybe you're picking a topic within your industry and you're just having a conversation about it. What are your thoughts on this area of finance, this area of law, this area in coaching? What are your thoughts and you're creating content around that? It's also a great one because you don't have to put so much energy in because it's not just you trying to produce everything. You can talk to other people and create content like that. Another one is to have a show. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just gonna get some water. I've been talking so much. So another one is a show. So producing a regular show, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a um, interview series, but you're creating some type of regular piece of content where you can just say, hey, would you like to be on my show? Would you like to be featured? Behind the scenes is fantastic for both photo and for video, but you're just showing people what does, the life, what does life look like in your business and what does life look like in your project that you're working on. I know with Rigare, when we were filming his entire book, his entire life story, we're taking a lot of photos behind the scenes, just showing people what it's like and bringing them along on the journey. The vlog is fantastic. I think it's gotten very, very popular in the last couple of years, but it's sort of a, 
it's an artistic and sort of fun way to bring people into your world. Vlogging, it's very authentic, it's very run and gun. Some people just pick up a camera, start talking to it. Hey everybody, here I am today at my office, blah, blah, blah. That's a very sort of easy type of content to get into. Documentary is a bigger project, but if you have a big project going on, a big difference that you're making in the world, a fantastic way to create content around it is by creating a documentary. Have someone follow you around, have someone document everything that's happening and create one big piece out of it. Uh, and then events. So right now, um, we're doing an event and my team is live streaming the whole event. And that creates more content that we can then repurpose and use in other areas. So events are a fantastic place to get content. And particularly if you're a speaker or a consultant and you're running an event, that's great for your speaking reel or it's great to just show people the work that you're doing. Our favorite at Video Y is the About Us. This is a brand video, an About Us video that sits on your website and it tells your story. It tells people what you stand for, who you are and your values. So oftentimes when I'm quoting for new business, every time I send out a proposal, I have a video about my purpose. I'm sharing with people, this is what I stand for, these are our principles, and I'm just bringing people into the world. Oftentimes when I'm on a website and there's no about us section, or there's no video that just sort of connects me, I'm like, well, I just kind of don't care because everybody else's website is just the same thing. But when you have an authentic piece of content like that, it creates more connection. Testimonials are fantastic pieces of content. Finding a client, finding someone who's had a great experience with you, recording that and then having it on your website. This builds so much credibility and I just think it's a fantastic piece to have. You can use video for sales. So if you're advertising, you're trying to sell a product, video works so well to just introduce the product, to get people engaged and to really start to get some leads there. Uh, and then adverts. So if you're doing Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising, any advertising, you're wanting to create video content that encapsulates what the product is and how it can benefit the audience. So um, <clears throat> now we're going to go into some details. So how do we actually do the content and what does that look like in reality? first thing I wanted to go through is lighting. So lighting probably makes the biggest difference in your content. Uh, oftentimes when we're making video or even on Zoom calls, things don't look great. Um, so these are two different photos of me. On the left hand side, we have a photo of me with no lighting at all. Um, I don't like this photo. I think I look super, super tired and just it looks really grainy and it, it's a bad shot. The only difference that I've made is I've put a light on myself on the right side. It's similar to this big LED that we have over there, but just changing the lighting makes a huge, huge difference when you're producing content. So same thing when we're doing Zoom calls. Oftentimes people are sitting in dark rooms, they're getting all this sort of grain and noise on the video and it just doesn't look good. The simple fix that you can do is just find the light in your environment. So if it's a window, you're sitting next to the window, or if you're buying an external LED light, just use a light and it transforms your content. So really simple here, lighting is key. The only difference between these photos is that I've just put a light there. Audio is probably the most important component when you're producing content. If you have poor audio, people are just going to view your content as bad and poor quality. The issue here is that on most of our devices, so whether you're using a phone, um, your laptop, or even some of the cameras that we use, the inbuilt microphones are horrible. So unless you use an external microphone, one that's built for audio, the audio is going to sound horrible. So if you're doing Zoom calls, Look at investing in a podcast style microphone that you can plug straight into your laptop and it instantly improves the quality. If you're producing your own videos, you want to purchase a lapel microphone or a directional microphone, plug that into your device, instantly increases the quality. These things you can probably buy from, I'd say 20 bucks, maybe up to a couple of hundred, but any microphone dramatically improves the quality of your content. 
And so what can you do now? So I think I'm just going to quickly check on time here. So the question is, you know, what can you do now? Once you can really learn how to produce content and share your story, I think you're in a really incredible space. My whole journey of business, how I've grown, is really just by me sharing my story. I'm constantly telling people about what we're working on. I'm constantly educating my community, building trust, getting to know people. And that's what's built the business that we have today. So I'm really sort of excited because I think content is awesome. I think everybody should be using content, should be using video, photo, and marketing and getting their messages out there. And I think most important is to tell your story. The reason that I'm so authentic about where I've come from and what I go through is because I know it makes a difference for people. I think the most important thing in my life is that if I can show people what's possible and share it in an authentic way, that shows other people that it's possible too. If I'm just sort of saying, yep, you know, everything's great and there's no issues, there's no connection there and it doesn't make a difference for anybody. So I really encourage you to share your story, to be authentic with it, because it really can make a difference in people's lives. And guys, that's it for my presentation. I would love to answer any questions you have about video, about photo, about content. But thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate you making the time to be here. Yeah, so I think that's a great question. Um, so should you have a script when you're producing video content or, or not? Um, I think, so, so here are my thoughts on this. You want to be authentic, like authentic is a really important part when you're producing content. Sometimes when you are reading from a script, you stop being authentic and you stop making an emotional connection with people and you stop performing and you go into, I'm gonna remember everything on the script and I'm gonna make sure I get it right. When I'm doing video, I'm trying to relax, I'm trying to connect with people, I'm trying to emotionally get in touch with the story I'm telling, and I'm trying to move people. But if I'm trying to remember a script, I can't access any of that, and I just become very robotic. So I think, honestly, I think the best way to do it is to practice free-flowing. Practice free-flowing on your ideas. You might have a couple of dot points and, and ways to go about your content, but you really don't want to script things. And actually, an extremely valuable skill that you can learn is how to free flow on topics. So actually with this presentation, I haven't written a lot about what I'm gonna talk about. It's just the stuff that I'm constantly talking about. It's my area of expertise. But I've practiced so much just free flowing with content. So also, I've seen so many people that we've worked with in our business who come to the video shoot with a script. And then the issue is, you can do the script, but when you say script, I'm expecting you're actor level proficient with the script. If you haven't, what happens is people come up and they kind of half learnt the script, and they sit down, we turn on the lights, we turn on the camera, and they're like, oh my God, I don't know my script. And then they just freak out and it's really awkward. So I guess, you know, I'm going a long way about saying this, but I think free flowing is the best way to go. I think have some dot points of what you want to talk about to sort of guide you, but you probably don't need a script. I hope that, I hope that helps. Yeah, so um, I think 
I think it's best with lighting to sort of invest a little bit more in the lights that you buy. You can buy very cheap lights on eBay and they're sort of those big sort of circular ring lights, but a lot of times they break, a lot of times they're sort of poor quality. The ones that we use are film um, and camera lights from a brand called Aperture. Um, I, can, I can sort of link anyone to the, to the one we're talking about, but it's, it's around a hundred bucks for an Aperture light. It's sort of looks like that, a big LED light, but much smaller than that. And those lights, you can adjust the intensity. And if you can use a good quality light like that, um, because sometimes, say if you're doing zoom calls, if you just flick that light all the way up, it blows up your face too much and there's too much light on it. Maybe it's sort of angled in the wrong way or it's just not working. But if you have one of these aperture professional camera lights, probably gonna be around 100 bucks to buy one of them. You can work with the intensity, you can work with the color of the light, and it just gives you a lot more flexibility. So yeah, we recommend Aperture as the brand that we use for lights. There's a great option at around 100 bucks. And I'd suggest just going for quality. Don't sort of, if you're gonna cheap out anything, don't cheap out on the lights, because it can really mess you up in the future. I hope, I hope that helps. Yes. Yeah, it's a good question. I think it sort of comes down to what type of content are you producing? I think if you're going down, so I think the simplest way to start is just with education. So, you know, you're a domain expert in your field and you're thinking, what are the common questions that people are asking? And then maybe you can write out a list of say, 15 to 20 topics. And that's your content for the next, you know, couple of weeks and months. I think to, well, say we're creating a three minute video. In reality, it could only take you three minutes to nail the speech, record it. Maybe there's some very minimal editing where maybe you're just cutting off the, the start and the end. Maybe you're then sending it off for subtitles and people can add subtitles to it for you. So maybe only an hour. It could really be that simple. It doesn't have to be too complex. Mm. Yep. Um, Thanks. Yep, so um, a question around what's the optimal length of video. I think it really depends on what platform you're putting your video content on. So um, LinkedIn, for example, I try to get my videos around